in economics, things take longer to happen than you think they will. And when they happen, they happen faster than you thought they could. And when they happen, they happen faster than you thought they could. Hey guys, how are you doing? Thanks for tuning in. Um, hope you guys are doing well. I know I've been slacking for the past few days when it comes to videos, but I've been busy with personal life and work. Um, everything's going well, thankfully. I hope the same is true for you guys as well. Um, today, 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 uh, Christine Lagarde, she was on a live stream alongside a bunch of other, um, I believe, banking officials in Europe uh, regarding their uh, banking and digital payment systems in transition conference that they're uh, that they're holding today and tomorrow on the 10th and the 11th of September, just for those who want to take note of that. Um, you can find that on the, I think it's the German bank, uh, Deutsche Bank. Uh, I hope I'm actually saying this right, but uh, there's a Euro, there's a link on the, the European Central Bank's uh, Twitter page you can take a look at. I'm sure that's more accurate than anything I have to say right now, but I'll do my best to also link that in the description below. Um, as you can see in the previous uh, clip here that I took from that initial, um, uh, well, I think that was actually the last stream of the day that they held. Um, Christine drew attention to the fact that in economics, things can transition faster than we anticipate them to be. be um, even though in the beginning stages, I'm just paraphrasing here, but in the beginning stages, it takes time for things to unfold. And they, they essentially take time to build up. And it makes sense because, um, for lack of better words, this particular process that has taken uh, these um, official bodies and uh, how do I say it? governance bodies to you know come up with regulations and uh, essentially educate the populace on what their um, what their plans are. I mean, it, it's it's taken quite some time. I mean, every single pump that we see within the uh, the crypto market or every single dip that we see in the traditional market is essentially a red flag or a telltale or a sign for, you know, uh, something, something more sinister in the, in the traditional markets in that it might not last long enough because of the debt crisis that is currently going on that has been catalyzed by, I think that's the right word. It's been, it's essentially been sped up by this, uh, black swan event of the people want to call it actually the beer beer cold as uh, <laughs> as crypto siege calls it or um, this terrible situation that we're all experiencing globally and um, yeah it, it's something to keep in mind whenever these kinds of uh, uh, streams come up I, I I pay attention as best as I can to what they have to say and do my best to you know try and decipher or um, you know take note of items that I know will affect my life you know so from my perspective i really appreciate you guys tuning in and also you know paying attention alongside with me and um at this rate it's just a waiting game because i believe the past five years minimum have shown us documentation after conference after meeting after uh partnership after collaboration like all these different instances have essentially pointed us in the direction of digitalization and digitalization in the banking industry, digital digitalization in the payments industry. Um, she mentioned specifically in the next video clip, if it's not what I already played already here, but she, she mentions that, you know, their system that they're planning on implementing over in Europe is going to be a 24 seven kind of deal throughout all. Um, she mentions all days of the year. So, these are things to keep in mind. These are also parallel with the current cryptocurrency uh, um, market in that it's 24 seven, 365, no break in between. And I guess the traditional market is going to be adopting these features alongside, um, alongside the crypt, alongside the crypto market, or I guess it's only time that will tell. Maybe it's actually the crypto market that will be swallowing the traditional market and adopting its features so that it's more, uh, so adoption is essentially sped up, but it's it's one thing to keep in mind because she did mention specifically that when those changes happen, they happen faster than anybody anticipates. And I think that's something that also Trump had mentioned in one of his many, many uh, conferences as well or, or um, press conferences or or statements and that 
you know, we there, there's a lot that's going to be happening. Not only in the in the I mean, I'm going to play that clip about. I think I played that in my last video actually, but long story short, things are going to happen faster than we anticipate. And I guess if I'm coupling that alongside what Trump said in my previous video and what he mentioned, I think a couple days ago. Next, uh, eight weeks, I would say. Things that nobody has even contemplated, thought about, thought possible. And things that we're going to get done and we have gotten done. We've started in most cases, but it's going to be a very exciting eight weeks. A uh, eight weeks, like I, I think, Mike, we can honestly say nobody's ever going to see eight weeks like we're going to have because we really have we have uh, we're taking on immigration taking on education we're taking on so many aspects of things that watch this part uh, people were hopelessly tied up in knots in congress i guess we can draw some correlation uh, and see maybe whether the Euro european plan aligns with the american plan long term we already know the canadian plan is uh essentially underway uh i believe it was uh king solomon that drew attention to uh rbc's which is royal bank of canada's um uh release of i think it was something to do with digital digital banking i'll do some more research on that and post it in my twitter um you guys are welcome to take a look at that my timeline's pretty it's pretty sporadic but nonetheless um, I just wanted to take the part of this particular stream that I felt was interesting and uh, leave it for you guys to make up your minds as to what um, you took from it. But as what I'm taking from it, it seems they're essentially warning us before they shift into the next phase of adoption. And when everything does fall into place, I guess we all can't say that they didn't warn us. So... Um, it's interesting to see this and watch this all unfold. Obviously, the markets have been really up and down this week as well. Um, I, for one, have chosen to take a step back until uh, I see a, you know, a further retracement of the overall uh, crypto market. But some sources that I've watched this week have also mentioned that there's going to be you know, an upward trend in the traditional market this week. So only time will tell. Maybe prices will dip down lower and uh, it will be a good opportunity for those of us that want to accumulate our uh, our digital assets to do so anyway you guys make the choice for yourselves but i thought this was interesting and i'm going to leave it at that as always if you guys get a chance don't forget to hit the like button the subscribe button and the notification bell for any time that i post a video and uh if you're looking to chat or connect on twitter feel free to follow me on there as well as i am trying to uh grow my account on that uh that platform as well nonetheless thanks for watching and uh we'll catch you guys on the next one still have domestic card schemes that do not accept cards from other member states, despite major efforts to integrate payment networks in Europe. And only a fraction of the more than 230 innovative fintech solutions available last year were usable for all of the most common daily transactions online, in shops, and peer-to-peer. So the euro system has set out its priorities, which are reflected in its retail payment strategy. It offers a conceptual vision for engaging the private sector to fill the gaps in our payment ecosystem in ways that promote financial inclusion and cohesion within Europe. The new EPI, which is the European Payment System, launched by 16 European banks, including major German ones, is an important part of this. This initiative aims to offer a pan-European payment solution that is secure, that is cheap, widely accepted. It will leverage the ultra-fast TIPS infrastructure that I've just mentioned, which allows to settle payments in real time at any time of the day, every day of the year. It also offers advantages from the perspective of European autonomy as a complement to international card providers. In other words, it increases our resilience. But alongside private sector solutions, central bank must, in my view, anticipate change. They not only need to look closely at the benefits that digital innovation can bring, they also need to examine the significant risks they pose and be prepared to innovate themselves. This is the starting point for the discussion on whether the euro system 
needs to introduce a digital euro or not. Introducing that digital euro would allow the euro system to be at the cutting edge of innovation. In theory, a CBDC, central bank digital currency, can be designed for wholesale or general purpose use. Digital wholesale money is not new, as banks have been able to access central bank money for decades. But new technology can be used to make settling financial transactions more efficiently. It also opens the possibility of a retail CBDC, which would be very innovative in that it would be accessible to a much wider audience, but it would be subject in our view and in the proposal that we're working on to three key considerations. And I will finish with these three considerations. One, maintaining access to central bank money. So the euro system would continue to ensure that all citizens have access to banknotes at all time. The digital euro in any event would be a complement to not a substitute for cash. Together, they would support financial inclusion and offer a choice to, cost to consumers. And this is in line with our policy of respecting consumer preferences when it comes to means of payment. While helping to address the consequences of a decline in the use of cash, particularly accurate in certain countries in the euro area, a digital euro would also ensure that sovereign money remains at the core of European payment systems. And it would support innovation by providing an alternative to private forms of money for fast and efficient payment in Europe and beyond. Second consideration for introducing a digital euro is that it could create risks that need to be carefully assessed and guarded against. If significant amount of bank deposits move into a digital euro, that may fundamentally change the role played by the banking sector in financing the economy, which would have implications for how we at the ECB implement monetary policy and support financial stability. We need to ensure that the digital euro, in the event that it is introduced, is designed in such a way that it contains such risks. Third and final consideration, is that the digital euro would need to be designed to meet public's demand for dig digital payment without discouraging or crowding out private payment solutions. It would have to embrace the respective strength of both the euro system and the private sector to ensure that the payment landscapes remains competitive and innovative. The euro system so far has made no decision on whether to introduce a digital euro or not. But like many other central banks around the world, we are exploring the benefits, the risks, and exploring carefully the operational challenges in doing so. The finding of the euro system task force are expected to be presented to the public in the coming weeks followed by a launch of public consultation. And I hope that many of you who are currently listening will participate. These efforts form part of our readiness to face the ongoing digital transformation in retail payments, which does not necessarily follow a linear path. As Rudy Dornbusch cautioned, and I think it applies very much to what we have been discussing and what I have been uh, commenting upon. In economics, things take longer to happen than you think they will. And when they happen, they happen faster than you thought they could. Central banks, in my view, can and should, within their mandates, be agent of change and fulfill their responsibilities towards their citizens. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, President Lagarde, for these very interesting and stimulating remarks.